Hi everyone, this is For the Love of Comics and this is going to be a very quick look at a particular edition of Asterix. Asterix obviously is the world famous, phenomenally popular French comic series and I've got a couple of videos on this which I will link up here and in the description below. While making those videos and over the last couple of weeks having conversations with a lot of Asterix fans online, I did become curious about these new editions being brought out specifically for the US market because of a new translation uh, being brought out by Paper Cuts. What really appealed to me was the fact that they were in hardcover. I've never owned any Asterix in hardcover and I wanted to see if this is something worth upgrading into for those who have uh, old tattered copies of Asterix from their childhood and would like something more robust. And as far as that is concerned, these are superb and solid editions from the production point of view. They've got a great shape to them. They're very easy to hold and read. The binding is sewn and the books are able to lie flat on the table with no gutter loss and the reading is just a pleasure whether you've got it lying flat or whether you're holding it up. The paper and the printing quality is top notch. The colors look beautiful. They're not oversaturated. The paper is not too glossy. So those are some of the bad habits that new editions of classic comics sometimes undertake and I'm glad to see that that is not the case over here. It's still vibrant and does the fantastic art of this series justice. Those are are the pros. What I would consider the cons obviously start with the big elephant in the room which is that of size. If we compare these editions to the original European album size we can see that there's a substantial difference in size which means that this is a shrunken down version of something that we are used to. If you're used to seeing it in this way, you will, I feel, be disappointed by seeing things at this level. It is worth pointing out though that the difference in size may not be as drastic as the covers make it look. And that's because the margins, top and bottom of these albums are thicker than the margins in this edition. So the proportion by which the books look resized may not be the same proportions that apply to the individual panels and the artwork inside them. It's still definitely a difference though. And so therefore I think that's one thing that may not work for people looking for an upgrade. I think it would still work fine for people who are reading it for the first time in these editions. They wouldn't really know what they're missing. But to me, it is a shame with this detailed art not to have it at this size. Like I talked about a little bit in my video on uh, Linkal, I also think that the smaller size affects reading for me. Maybe that's just because of my aged eyes but the font looks a bit thinner when it's reduced in this way. Apart from the size, what I was really intrigued by was the translation. The Paper Cuts editions have a brand new translation that is supposed to make it more contemporary and more US friendly. And that's something I've got to say I was a little concerned about because Anthea Bell and Derek Hawkridge's translation of the original Asterix Adventures are some of my favorite works of translation. They really captured the zany and the humor, especially because of all the puns and the linguistic humor that Asterix as a series has. And I've always admired the fact that if it was this rich and this dense in English, what a great job translating uh, these people must have done. Because obviously the puns in a different language because of wordplay would be something else altogether. I'm just going to give a couple of examples from the first book over here, Asterix the Gladiator, which I'm using as representative of the approach and the manner in which the new translation has been done. A couple of interesting things to note, we now have little asterisks against the Latin words and phrases that are used in speech and a footnote at the bottom giving you a translation. So, pila over here, pila over here is equal to javelins. This wasn't translated for us before and this is something I appreciate. I had to figure out a lot of these things in my childhood. There was no internet at that point of time where I could look things up and a lot of things were probably incorrectly assumed which now you don't need to worry about with the translations accompanying the text. Another thing that we can see is that 
ave, which was kept in the speech of the Romans, has been now changed to hail. This is something that I'd heard about before and I wasn't sure whether I would like it, but it's okay. You get used to it pretty fast and hail prefect, hail Caesar also makes sense and it sounds all right. I still like the ave. I did learn about ave and Roman salutations from Asterix when I was young, so I think there's a missed opportunity there to teach children. And that's also the case with the word indomitable. The indomitable Gauls were the thorn in Caesar's side, according to the original translations. That's now been changed to unconquerable, and I understand that because they're saying kids will understand unconquerable more than indomitable. But you don't always have to make things that kids will automatically already know. You could have language in a book that teaches kids new words the way I learned Indomitable from Asterix. And it makes me kind of sad to think that kids who read this edition will, won't encounter that word and maybe not learn it at this point of time. They haven't changed any of the art, which also includes not having changed the racial stereotypes uh, that were Often there, the problematic depictions of black Africans, for example, but they have reduced the cartoonish redness of the lips to a more muted skin colored brown, although the shapes remain the same. The translation to me seems pretty standard, but it for some reason feels less zingy or less energetic. For example, over here, he says, the centurion says, Ave Prefect, this is a great honor for me. Over here he says, Hail Prefect, having you here for a visit is a great honor. It's not that different, it just seems a little convoluted. You could have just said, this is a great honor for me. Having you here for a visit seems like extra work, but it's okay. Here's one that's a little stiffer. In the earlier translation, the centurion said, but Prefect, about these invincible Gauls, there's just one snag. Well, what is it? They happen to be invincible. So that's the joke. It goes back around to the fact that we call them the invincible Gauls. Over here, it's, but prefect, about those invincible Gauls, yes, what's the problem? They actually are invincible. They actually are invincible isn't as funny as they happen to be invincible because he's already used that word before. That circular joke over here is, it, I mean, it's an underlining, but it's just not the same humor. Another thing that really bothered me was the fact that they changed the song that Cacophonix is singing, which in itself is not a problem. He was singing, maybe it's because I'm Armorican that I love Armorica so, and maybe we don't know what Armorica is or even which song this is referencing. This has now been changed to, if I had the wings of an eagle, over these broken dreams I will fly. I'm not sure if I'm just missing which song that is, but I don't understand that reference as a more modern song or as a more uh, popular or more familiar song. So I'm not really sure what that change does. But what I'm really irritated about is what strikes me as a really large grammar error where it says, if I had the wings of an eagle over these broken dreams, I will fly. It seems to me if I had the wings of an eagle over these broken dreams, I would fly is the right way to write that. I, I can't believe that such a simple mistake has been allowed to pass, especially when you're changing the lyrics of the song from what it was before. Although the current translator probably wasn't translating from looking at the other translation, they were probably going from the French. And I think in certain places, they've kept a very literal translation instead of going for uh, the fun and the spirit of what was there before. And this leads to some very odd things where this is not really what I expect from a good translation, where in the Anthea Bell and Derek Hockridge original translation, for example, over here, Asterix says, silence, our chief vital statistics is going to make a speech. Over here, he says, quiet, our leader of vital statistics is going to lecture us. That just doesn't make any sense. He's going to lecture us does not mean the same thing as give a lecture or give a speech. This is something that I really think someone should have known better. There's another bit of translation that really stood out to me as odd. In the original translation, Vital Statistics over here says, it's risky Asterix, but you're right. We can't leave our bard in the lurch. He sings atrociously, but he's a good sort. Now, maybe he's a good sort is a little too British for the American audiences, I guess, is what the publishers decided, but they changed it to, it's dangerous, but you're right Asterix, 
we can't abandon our bard instead of we can't leave our bard in the lurch. Leaving them in the lurch may be an old fashioned uh, term. So they're changing that to abandon our bard. That part is fine. But then he says he's as bad a singer as he is a good comrade. So there are two things I see wrong with it. First of all is the construction. You don't say he's as bad a singer as he is a good comrade. You would say he's as bad a singer as he is good a comrade. But the more important thing is, it doesn't actually make sense to say he's bad singer before you say he's a good comrade. What you actually want to say is he is as good a comrade as he is bad a singer because you're giving the reason why you need to rest him. You don't need to rescue him because he's a bad singer. You need to rescue him because he's a good comrade. The fact that the grammatical construction is wrong, but also the intention is the other way around, shows me that this is not really well edited, which is why we have such a stiffness of language coming through. And that's really what I felt throughout the book. A lot of the things are a lot more spelled out. They seem more literally translated instead of going with the spirit instead of having jokes, you've got something that is a lot more wooden. I think Anthea Bell and Derek Hockridge when making the original English translation had often put in jokes where the original may not have had a joke and that might be what I'm seeing over here that this is just much more faithful to the original French but when I make a comparison it definitely suffers. I'll give you one more example over here in the original translation Asterix asks him that thank you for taking us to Rome. I hope we're not making you go out of your way. And Epidermis, the Phoenician merchant says, as it happens, we were planning to go to Rome. One of my predecessors abandoned his ship there. And Asterix asks, it sank? And he says, no, he sold it. He was a better salesman than salesman. Salesman with an S-A-L-E, better at sales than at sailing. So there's a salesman salesman joke at the punchline of this exchange. Now, if we go to the new translation, the American translation, uh, Asterix asks the same thing. I hope we're not making you go out of your way. And he says, actually, we were meaning to go to Rome where one of my predecessors left his boat. So instead of saying abandoned his ship, he now says left his boat. Asterix still asks, it sank. But that doesn't quite make sense in the same way. He wouldn't be saying it sank when he says he left his boat. But if he says he abandoned his boat, that's like abandoned ship. It's sinking. That question makes more sense if he's talking about a boat being abandoned rather than a boat being left. It seems like a small difference, but it completely changes the dynamic of this panel following this one. And worse still is the punchline in the new edition, which instead of saying, Oh no, he sold it. He was a better salesman than salesman. Epidermis now says, oh no, he sold it. He was a better merchant than a seafarer. And that's just flat. I mean, it's information, but it's no longer a joke. Now, I'm not saying this is a problem with the translation because maybe it wasn't a joke in French and that was one of the things that the translators had put in, but when you make a comparison, I think there's no doubt that this new translation suffers. And that's why I think I can't quite recommend this as an upgrade for people looking to get hardcover asterisks. The size is obviously a big issue, but even if I had been able to take a little bit of shrinking down uh, at this level, I can't take the translation not having the kind of biting wit and the kind of fluidity uh, that I'm used to. Of course, people reading this for the first time, not having something to compare it to, not going page by page uh, might find it to be perfectly fine. I'm sure the adventures will still be very enjoyable. They are, after all, great adventures. Asterix is a very funny series with a lot of history, a lot of culture, a lot of geography, playing a part with some excellent art. As a first time purchase with no other option, I think this will do fine to get you into the series and get you to appreciate what the world wants. And I think that's the whole point behind Paper Cuts' US editions. It's to introduce them to brand new readers people who may not be familiar with it. They're not really aiming for people like me who might be interested
interested in a nice edition of Asterix that they don't have as an upgrade. I don't really understand why the translation hasn't been given the kind of attention that I think it deserves. And I also don't understand why they shrank the format. Paper Cuts is also the company that brought the Smurfs uh, to the American market. And over here, they had no issues maintaining the original European album size in hardcover. So why they didn't take the same thing they did for the Smurfs with Asterix, Asterix being ostensibly a much more popular, although I guess in America the Smurfs are more popular because of the TV show, but it just seems like a missed opportunity when you could have had things at this level. But honestly, I would maybe still have been able to reconcile myself to a slightly smaller size, but unfortunately I can't with the kind of translation that I've seen. Now, granted, that's only for one book. Maybe it's better in the others. But at this point of time, based on that, I cannot recommend this as an upgrade option to Asterix fans, to people who have grown up reading Asterix with the translations by Anthea Bell and Derek Hawkridge. So that's all for this quick video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.